So what do we got here? We got some three quarter inch cedar blocks with holes in it. A lot thick and thicker and bigger than I normally do. This is the normal size. What do we got in this old dart drawer here? Oh, we got some ready rod. Let's see if we can make a Christmas tree today. Wind spinner Christmas tree. You know, kind of like this one, but a Christmas tree. Okay, so how I first start this off, this is a 1 8 inch ready rod. I put a, a Loctite washer. See, it's got rubber inside. Uh, sorry, Loctite bolt. See how it's got rubber on the inside there? It's a automatic Loctite, right? So I put that on there with the washer here, okay? And I'm going to leave a little bit extra on the bottom because there's going to be, some, I got to drill the hole through this ready rod and there's going to be something hanging on the bottom of it. But um, yeah, so let's start stacking these. Uh, you guys, you can make your wood blocks any any type you, uh, any size you want. This is Western Red Cedar, just an old fence board thing. Okay, so you guys can see how I got this lined up, right? Because the trees are wider at the bottom, obviously, and thinner at the top. So I got the smallest pieces at the, at the top, and the thicker pieces, wider pieces at the bottom. And uh, so now let's start putting them on the ready rod with the bottom widest piece first. Okay, so we got our nut and bolt on the bottom. And let's just, like I said, we'll put the widest pieces on first. Sometimes they're, you want to make your drill hole kind of tight. So it's on there. Let's push it down to the bottom. Let's see if I can do a better camera shot of this one, okay? So here it is. Push it in. This one goes on a lot easier. Slide it down to the bottom. Okay, so there we go, we got three on. You guys can see how that works. I'll get the rest on and then I'll be back. Yep. Okay guys, so you can see here, it's all together, okay. Now I gotta take this upstairs and cut it with my little uh, zip cut Dremel thing and put the nut and the bolt on the top. And then we'll start drawing a Christmas tree on. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Draw out a Christmas tree on. It doesn't even have to be a Christmas tree. It's just going to be a tree. I'll decide if it's going to be a Christmas tree, okay? I'll be the boss of that. Christmas tree or not Christmas tree. Okay. So now i got to cut here. i got this uh, Dremel cutter. It's a zip cutter on my micro motor. You guys, when you want to cut this ready rod... When you cut this ready rod, you just kind of want to cut it. You want to be careful because you want it. You still have to get your nut on here, and you don't want to screw up the threads, right? So let's get that cut. There you go. Easy as one, two, three. Okay. So let's put our washer on there and hope we can get our lock screw on there. I'll show you guys this right now. See the rubber inside this? So if you go to buy them, there's rubber inside there. And the rubber or the plastic, whatever it is, will lock onto this, the threads. Okay, perfect. Perfect fit. So I'll tighten this up. And uh, not too tight yet, but I'll tighten it up and then uh, we'll draw our tree on and figure out what we're going to do from there. So i got to get the wrench to do this. 
Okay guys, so I did get this tightened up a bit. You know, when you tighten this side, it basically makes these ones hard to spin, right? But you also have to tighten the bottom too because these ones will it well it just tightens up these these ones and not these ones. It don't don't okay, whatever. So um I also forgot to say when you drill your little tiny hole through here with the metal work metal cutting uh, drill bit this is round right so it's best to make give it a flat surface for the drill to uh, sit on and you can hole punch it so what I'm gonna do is I got my little zip cut disc too I'm just gonna grind off those threads and kind of make it give it a flat surface here so the drill will be able to whatever go through properly Yeah, I know that this isn't what these zip cut discs are for, so you have to be real careful because they can uh, really explode on you guys. There you go. Okay, so now I'm going to take this uh, on, take it outside, and hit it with my orbit orbit sander, hook and loop one, and uh, get everything smooth, nice and clean, so I can draw a friggin' Christmas tree on it. Yep. Okay guys, so here's my orbit sander. It's got the 80 grit on there. These things are pretty handy to have when you're doing stuff like this. I think this was like a 80 bucks. And it's like a, they're Velcro, right? For, the, for those of you that don't know. It's called hook and loop online, but I call it Velcro. So I'm just going to kind of clean this thing up. Okay guys, you don't have to hit it with the sander, I just like to for when I'm drawing things on, that's about it. And try and get the, it will make these um, end pieces more flush to each other, you see? So anyways, I'll draw my center line on, and then it's time to start uh, drawing on a friggin' tree. Christmas tree, regular tree, Christmas tree, regular tree, just don't know. Okay, you guys can see here, I got a center line drawn on, right? Now I got this big ruler, I'm going to go from one point down to here, on both sides. So that should, this is just an experiment for, experiment for me too guys, so. And girls, so there's one side of the tree. Okay, to the point. And there's the next side of the tree. So now I gotta cut out the little fucking branch things. I'll figure it out. Okay guys, so here you can see I got the branch things cut and this is why I suggest using a pencil because look at all the freaking marks I got on here, right? Use a pencil, erase it, try again. So I'll take this outside with my uh, jigsaw, cut these little notches out in here, make these little uh, branch points stick out. Okay, and there's our tree trunk. Is that square? Yeah. Okay, so let's take it outside. Okay, guys, so you can see here now I got my shape cut out, okay? So when you get that jigsaw, I suggest, I didn't have one, but I suggest you get like a fine, fine uh, uh, blade so you can get uh, nicer cuts and you won't get this bullshit, right? So anyways, I'm going to take this outside and clean up the edges with my orbit sander and we will continue. Continue, we must. Okay guys, so I got this uh, Makita finger sander right here from when I'm doing chainsaw carving. As it was suggested uh, by in Ryan Cook's videos, he's a professional chainsaw carver. But um, this, I tried doing it with that. It works wicked, but it's just not the right tool for the project. So it's good to have different kinds of tools, guys. So I'm gonna go back to the orbit sander here and um, sand it all up. Okay guys, so I got it all sanded up, 
you can see I got the little holes uh, drilled through the ready rod actually my buddy did it for me and um, so now what I'm gonna do is spin it into place I don't know if this this thing's gonna work out whatever but you don't learn if you don't try right and I've never seen another one made like this so whatever okay so um, I'm gonna spin it into place then I got this uh, spray paint here color what color is this emerald green spin it into place spray paint it okay I suggest you paint it after they're spun into place because this paint will kind of lock each each piece together if that makes sense it will act kind of like glue so let me get this spun and you guys can see you just kind of spin it see that spin I'm not gonna give this one too much a big a spin see there's a full spin it to the edge that's how you do the normal ones but I'm just gonna give this one like half each one okay see that so I'll get this spun and paint it hey meow what do you say about this Lee silly Christmas tree okay guys so I don't know how much I like this, but whatever. It is what it is. You don't know if you don't try, right? So the the like you can see here, it's not that twisty. It is twisty. I only gave it a quarter of a thing on each one, right? You can see there. Well that they kind of half some of them look half, some of them look quarter. I don't freaking know. Now I'm gonna paint it, okay? Lee, hey, should I paint it? What do you think? You wanna smell it? Smell it. There you go, yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, guys. So I got each one where I want them to be, good enough for me. Got this green paint, like I said, mix it up good. And uh, start painting their Christmas green. Remember, it's Christmas, Christmas crap, guys. So I'll do one coat and I'm going to try and get, see you got to get all sides right you have to get here then you have to get down in here so I don't know I'll get this finished painted and uh, I'll be back I'll paint the back the bottom black too or brown I don't know okay so I'll let this sit here and dry for about 35.5 billion years and uh, I'll be back okay so this paint is somewhat dry especially on my fingers too so um, to paint this bottom black, I'm just gonna get this, uh, I don't know what kind of paint this is, it's just black paint I had here. I'm gonna spray it into this little thing here and then I'm gonna use my paintbrush to paint on the bottom black so I don't make a mess because I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, I make big messes, guys. Okay, so what I'll do is just spray it in here. See, like, look, it's all on my fingers and shit. Okay. So we'll do this, dip the brush in there, and we'll just paint the freaking bottom black. You know? See, the bottom line is, and here's a shout out to my buddy over there in the States, Mark DeBlanc. He's been selling the wood spinners like crazy. He can't keep up. Here's a shout out to you, Mark DeBlanc. Gonna have to uh, charge more for your wood spinners there, bud. Okay, so uh, I'll get this finished painted and then uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys, so I got the bottom all painted. I got all this all painted up and underneath and stuff like that. So um, it's a little bit basic for me right now. It's just kind of a little bit too plain, but you guys, it doesn't need any more work than this. This is very good enough for your tree hanger, okay? So, but anyways, I'm going to take it upstairs and hit it with my flap sander and um, see if I can kind of give it some more like an uh, antiquing character. So let me take it upstairs. Okay, guys, so we're upstairs. I want to say one thing that you could do. You could get some what, like a little tiny paintbrush and paint some white along there. So each bottom, so it looks like there's a uh, snow on, on the, the tips of the branches. Right, that's what you could do. But what I'm going to do, I got this special Peter Blair Mandrel on here. Okay, he makes these guys, um, for all of you that don't know. 
if you want to know how to get these, you can just uh, leave a comment below and I'll get up, I'll get back to you. But yeah, this is the Peter Blair mandrel. And um, I got, uh, I think, 80 grit sandpaper on here. So what I'm going to do is just try and kind of hit the bottoms of this. I'll see how well that works. I could just use sandpaper and do it, but meh, I don't care. And um, we'll kind of make it look uh, antiqued looking. Maybe. Yep. Uh-huh. Okay, so you guys can see here I got it antique, antiqued pretty good. Some of the green bled through down there because I overspray paint down here, but I don't really care about that. Okay, so um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some white stripes across these points here. Just a little, so it just gives it a little bit of a snow thing, okay? So I got this dollar store paint here, okay? White and black. I'm, I'm just going to try it white first, okay? And I got a dollar store paintbrush. I'll sell this after the video for, I'll let the paint dry. And I'll sell it for, let's see here. Um, how about uh, half a million dollars? I'll include the paint tray with dry paint on it too. But anyways, back to the point. So this, I'm going to basically be doing bri, bri, uh, dry brushing, okay? So that's where you don't have that much paint on your brush. So it's basically... You know, you got your your paint on your brush. You're going to put some paint down here. Oh, jeez. Shoot the camera, man. You're going to put some paint down here, okay? Really thin. Excuse me. Really thin. And then wipe it off. Make it so there's barely any paint on your brush, okay? Like, barely any. And then you just kind of, like, um, let's see here. Just give it some frost on the tips. So you can see that there's not much paint really going on there. So I guess I'll get this done off camera because I'm going to need to concentrate or it'll look like um, donkey crap. So um, yeah, okay, I need to uh, I need to finish this. But that's uh, dry stroking anyways. Dry brushing. Sorry, dry brushing, not stroking. Okay, guys. So yeah, I'm a lot happier with the uh, way that looks now. It's kind of been antiqued and um, the dry brushing the snow on the thing so let's see okay so now let's uh let me, geez what geez wow let me get the hardware to put through the holes here it's a fishing fishing spindle and uh let me go get it and i'll be right back yeah. okay so the spray paint was oil-based paint um, whatever the white paint is water-based paint so i decided so the, the rain doesn't take this water-based paint away. Just to give it a quote, quick coat of this outdoor clear matte lacquer, whatever friggin' shit it's called. So I'm going to spray this, spray this on before I put the spinner thing on, the fishing swivel spinner thing on so it doesn't spray inside the swivel thing and plug it up, right? Because the ones I use have bearings and you don't want this stuff to get inside the bearings because it will lock up the bearings. So I'll get this sprayed and then we'll be back. Okay, guys, so everything's dry, right? You know, just a tree that big would be fine too, right? This is, you know, if you look at it from here, right to there, that'd be a perfect size tree. So anyways, um, okay, I got the thing hung up there. I got the, the, the fishing lure spinner thing, swivel, okay? It's hooked through the hole there, you see? And I got some metal wire, like a picture frame wire hanging stuff. For these bearings, guys, I said it in my other videos, make sure you get the ones that are ball bearing swivels because the ones that aren't ball bearings, they don't spin, these things won't spin as good. Some guys just use like using fishing line, that's it. It will spin one way, then it'll spin back the other way, but that's about it. But that's not the style that I'm doing here. Get the ball bearing tape, guys, for sure. Ball bearing swivels. Okay. So I just got those at the local Canadian Tire here in Canada. So let's go hang this sucker up. Okay, here's another shout out for you, Mark DeBlock. You know, you can put those Christmas ball things on here, or whatever you want to do, sing jingle bells, Santa smells, whatever. So you can paint those on. You can let little things hang off down these sides here. Little things hang here. So let's give this a spin. See how well the bearing spinners turn? You just need a light wind for that thing to spin spin too right just a real light wind 
it spins good like that because it's the bearings guys so there's your first Christmas tree and my last Christmas tree wind spinner thing think you should make some of these mark I think they'll be good sellers at uh, Christmas time I think they will oh I think they will oh shoot I forgot to do one more thing so there you go it's all done look it's even got a Christmas bell huh how about that mark huh how about that silly little Christmas bell it's not very loud there you go, there's your freaking Christmas tree. Everybody, hope you're doing good and um, be safe everybody. Dinner's ready. Dinner's ready. Dinner's ready. Who wants dinner?